Well, hello, folks. This is Jamie Oichel from runningrestaurants.com, where we bring you the tips, tools, and techniques you need to make your restaurant more profitable and successful. Today, I've got a great five questions with episode with Eric Goodwin, CEO of Goodwin Recruiting. And today's talk is going to be all about staffing for, uh, to launch a new restaurant. I'm really looking forward to getting into this with you, Eric. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me, Jamie. Looking forward to it. Yeah, man, I want to I want to dive right in because this stuff uh, it, it's really interesting, and you have a unique background of not only running a recruiting company but also running and being a part of several restaurants. So you have both sides of this. Um, in, in particular, I know you've recently launched a restaurant, so you've gone through this yourself. So tell me, for your restaurant and the ones you start, and for you when you advise clients, who are those first couple of key hires, uh, and how do you find them? And, and they're so critical. So how do you get the right people in place? Sure. Um, for us, you know, most recently on the concept in Portsmouth, uh, which is a little bit of a smaller operation than the Friendly Toast operations. Uh, in that scenario, the key hire there is your executive chef and your general manager. And uh, two crucial positions, obviously, the food and beverage aspect of things and, and your food is the heart of the house. And, you know, very important to make sure you're in alignment with your chef and your GM in terms of you know, your, your brand, your focus, uh, the, the quality, uh, style, menu, all those sorts of things that are very important. So those are the first two most important hires um, for any new restaurant, in my opinion. Absolutely. So, so those guys, you, you, you want to have them, absolutely. And, but getting them, finding them. Uh, you're, you're not going to grab those people in, in, in the newspaper, like I said. And I know you have the background, so you're a little bit unique. But how can a normal operator find those absolutely critical people and make sure that it's going to work. Yeah, it's a real challenge out there. You know, in most markets, the industry is short 1.8 million managers in the next decade. Um, and, you know, with a natural quality of life balance uh, challenges, uh, it's a hard market to, to hire for. Uh, so the key to all of that is to have a great reputation and be great to your people and I think that's people will be attracted to you um, for that. So for us, we utilize obviously good in recruiting uh, to cast a wider net on the candidates we might otherwise um, uh, seek with more organic or internal um, actions. Uh, but as a complement to that overall process, we start with you know recruiting uh, and recruiting partners that know me, know my style, my profile, my core values, things that are essential to the long-term success of the brand. And that way they can start an intelligent search for me based on all the candidates that, that they have in their files and have been working with you know, for several years in some cases. So we start there to see what's out there. And then we traditionally, I'll use my natural network uh, of people out there. And that could be anything from vendor relationships to other restaurant, re restaurant people to uh, placing ads as well, if you'd, if you'd like to do that. Um, I think that is... Uh, a double-edged sword when you're placing ads, you know, on uh, the job boards, traditional job boards, but it has another way to perhaps cast a wider net and uh, get a few candidates. Yeah, absolutely. You, you kind of have an unfair, unfair advantage of being uh, integrated into the industry there. So, uh, but good advice there. So uh, let, let's, I, I want to get a little bigger scale, uh, but before we talk about that next uh, layer of staffing, I want to talk overview wise about the timeline of staffing a new restaurant operation and specifically how you integrate that in with all the other million details that happen when you start a restaurant. How do you think about that? Yeah, the target, the timing is always a moving target because if you're building a new concept or starting a new place, you're beholden to permitting processes, construction, you know, delays, um, the timing of all your equipment and things that need to come in, which can vary if you're, you know, designing a hood fan system, you know, that's uh, unique to your space kind of thing. So it's a, it's a moving target. So you have to start with what that what target you have date that you want to open by and then work backwards from there. So then you need to factor in hiring time and then you need to factor in training time. Uh, and then you need to factor in probably some delays along the way. I've you know, developed you know, quite a few restaurants. <laughs> the uh, target date I don't think has ever been hit one time. So you also want to be practical there that you don't hire too early uh, from a financial standpoint, but you don't hire too late. So it affects your, uh, start date opening if you know 
choosing either of those, you would choose starting early. So whatever your training program is, you know, in our case, it's, you know, 60 days, two months of training. And so we backdate, you know, from there. And, uh, and then you have to time out the training of the hourly team as well into that. So it's going to be two or three weeks. So you factor all then you've got to be several months out in front of uh, your, your target date. I was going to ask you a little bit about that training piece to give uh, perhaps a, a, a newer operator some feedback. And I, and I like that you shared those two dates, uh, 60 days, maybe for the, for the big management type stuff. And, and then two to three weeks for their operational. Is that kind of what you've seen across, across your clients as well? Do some people get more aggressive with training time to make sure menu knowledge and upselling and all those things are in place? Uh, I would certainly hate to see a restaurant jam, you know, uh, 50 people in, 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 in one week's time period and then try to open the doors. What, 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 what else have you seen in the industry? Yeah, that's a great, great uh, observation, Jamie. And I think really crucial to the overall success of your operation. Traditionally, um, and in the indie world, at least, uh, restaurants, the development of them and the training of your team and all that is rushed. Um, the clock's ticking financially and, and um, there's a bank loan in place or something along those lines or an investor group or something like that. But I think, uh, you know, the reputation out there is that restaurants will typically open way too soon. Uh, there's no gestation training periods, start slow. Uh, um, kind of thing. It's just sort of a headlong rush to open the restaurant as quickly as possible. What happens then, though, is that you have one opportunity to impress your guests. Um, and it's very difficult uh, to restore that confidence and trust um, to uh, regain that that trust. You hear a lot of guests out there say, I wait a month, you know, until I go visit a restaurant. That's too bad, really, you know. So my philosophy on that, Jamie, is um, when we open, and someone's paying full price on the menu, we are 100% ready. Unless the guest is being discounted, and we run friends and family events, we pull people off the street, we'll uh, run, we won't even tell anyone we're open for a couple of weeks, just to get those that repetition and the practice, and to ensure when our guests come in, because they're paying for a full experience, they deserve a full experience. So I would rather delay, delay, delay that opening until we are 100% ready, and then when we open, you know, we, we're starting, you know, right from a positive spot. We have a real smooth opening. Oftentimes people fall in love with, I got to get the place open. I got to get revenue. I have to do this, but it's a short-term decision. So I, I go by the theory of success is paid in advance and um, rolling slowly, I think is a very common mistake uh, that a lot of operators on the independent side uh, do on the corporate side of things. Uh, you know, they're, sometimes a little better finance than, you know, have, you know, a, a larger a pool of, of resources to do that. And they typically will take a little bit more time, but still I feel like in general, the industry in general, you know, doesn't do a great job of training, you know, hiring, orientating, training, um, retaining really, really well. Uh, and then really giving the, the new place uh, the proper gestation period to be successful. And you see it, like you were mentioning, and, lack of, you know, menu knowledge or food timing or um, just you need, you need, it's a, you know, it's a, I like to say it's an orchestra. There's a lot of different pieces going at the same time and to pull all that together successfully requires practice. Yeah, it does. I, I wrote down a couple of things while you were talking. The, the biggest one was uh, the one opportunity or first impressions because that absolutely sets the tone. And, and even where I was, there's a, there's a, I haven't been into this place yet, but it, it, it opened recently in my town and there's a neighborhood blog type thing where people are talking about, hey, my first experience at this place was, was kind of shitty because they didn't know what they were doing and it was busy and they didn't have answers and they had to go to the manager and they didn't have my food. And so now this person shared that experience uh, and now I'm like, oh, maybe I won't go in there for a little while. Maybe, I, maybe I'll wait. Maybe I'll never go. So, uh, yeah, I think you've you got to get it right. So, so let's, uh, let's push ahead and talk about that next layer of people. So you've got your key people to start with, boom, they're getting everything rolling. Now you've got to hire a bulk of people, um, you know, and kind of uh, do, do a lot of the work. How do, you, how do you stagger that operational piece where you're, you're, you're really layering a bunch of people in in a short period of time? How do you find them? How do you get that piece going? What do you think? Yeah, hopefully, um, you know, you're in a market where there is, um, you know, enough of a candidate pool, you know, for your hourly positions. I think that's really important. 
Uh, the good thing about restaurants is a lot of the hourly folks, cooks, servers, bartenders, hosts, um, support staff kind of thing, everyone likes a new opportunity, I think, and they want to be part of the newest, you know, greatest thing in town. So we haven't found um, much challenge on the hourly side. I mean, cooks in, in general, it's, it's a cook short environment, just like it's a manager short environment. But I think you, uh, you have to be different and better in the way that you attract people and um, and engage your team uh, and make them part of your operation and your decision making and not just approach it sort of as a body or a one dimensional uh, kind of viewpoint. So I think if you have a strong set of core values that you can tell people about and you have some history that you can talk about. And if you have a, a brand that's successful, everyone wants to be attached to a forward moving place and organization. Uh, and also you've got to connect with them perhaps on some uh, social values, you know, if you're composting or uh, you're active part of your community, if you're uh, charitable and, and things along those lines, I think, um, you know, the hourly world, uh, they're sophisticated, they're smart, um, they want to be part of an organization that brings more than just a position. And I have to look at it from a three-dimensional standpoint. Yeah, what I just jotted down there was different and better. And then you talked about a few of those things, uh, talking about core values, social values, being charitable. What, what else have you found effective to explain different and better, how to engage them? Is it talking about uh, rewards that might come down the road, career path opportunities, growth? What else can restaurant that are starting that are trying to get in some places a very tight labor market um what are what are what are some other things you can do to talk to people and, and engage them and get them to choose your place what do you think sure, sure yeah we start with the core values when we're interviewing i think that's really important and that sort of you know everyone has their own but in our case it's about integrity it's about um having each other's back uh it's about um celebrating diversity Things along those lines that I think attract people that they actually know what you stand for. And I think that's really important. Most people are attracted uh, to those sorts of qualities in a place. So I think that's important. But also, uh, I think there are wounds out there for teams that have, you know, that have been part of bad openings and that scares people away. And sometimes even the hourly teams will say, let me let them get to six months and maybe I'll go there kind of thing. So we really tell a story of what our plan is, which is to go slowly, take our time, do a great job. And they have to have buy-in there. That, that has to work for them. Because it's not so easy sometimes when an, a server, for example, needs to make X amount of cash. And we're trying to tell them, you know, on the other hand, that we're going to take our time because we want, this, we want to play the long game and not the short game. And um, I think you know, people who are smart are attracted to that and that they know that we're not going to compromise their training. We're not going to cut corners. We're not going to throw them to the wolves and that they'll have a, a, a true management team around them to help support them. And then we provide all the tools and resources to be successful. So you got to have great training materials, great testing, great follow-up. And I think a really high quality person uh, respects that and wants to be part of that kind of organization. So again, it's just not, you know, a, a very quick, process. You really got to take your time. It's the single most important thing you can do. Nothing is more important than having the right team. I focus all my time on that. Yeah, I do uh, wonder about that piece of needing to make, needing to make money. And, and so if, if a person's looking, looking at that, going, oh man, they're going to open slow. I'm not going to make money for a while. That can, be, that can be stressful. But I really, really love the way you're talking about building the long-term plan of a restaurant. That's so much more important than that short-term Bang. I mean, having a team that's going to be in place and buy in and have the right culture, that's really the only way to long term do it. So I, I really do appreciate the way you're talking about that piece of it. Uh, let's get into uh, leads for staff. Now, you have a unique perspective on this as, as, a, re as a recruiting company person, uh, but you also have the other sides of it. So there's word of mouth, there's referrals, there's recommendations, there's job boards, there's recruiting companies. How do all of them come together? for restaurants or these days? I mean, we're in a digital marketplace these days. What, what do you think? Sure, and just back to the training real quick. We also pay our servers, we'll pay them in the 10 to $15 range to train as well. I think that's really important. So to compensate a little for that slow slow walk to, to success. Um, uh, and are you talking, Jamie, on the management level? The recruiting companies are management level. Are you talking both management and hourly or management in terms of uh, 
putting a team together. I, I think I was just curious about the, when you're getting putting the whole piece together, how, how, how should restaurants look at all the different options that are out there? Word of mouth, job boards, recruiting companies. I think you're going to use a little mm-hmm. of each probably, ultimately, right. but uh, was just looking for your kind of uh, thought process on that. I think, yeah, I think you have to be good in all areas and, and be very aggressive in, in all areas. I mean, not limit opportunities uh, or options. So traditional Craigslist I don't know, postings or for, for managers, if you want to go on the job boards, recruiting companies, obviously, I think have unique access to candidates that restaurant operators don't. Um, um, and you have to sort of have a representative for you about sort of pitching your concept and your core values the candidates who might not otherwise think of you. So I really like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, word of mouth, I know I, I'm always, when I see a great person in a restaurant, I always drop my card and I'll jokingly say, when you want to play for the varsity team, let me know kind of thing. Right. Um, so, um, so I'm always out there actively recruiting and my managers are doing the same when we see a great person and we're not out there trying to steal people from our, you know, uh, brethren in the, in the restaurant industry, but, I always say if something changes or, you know, uh, and, you know, you're not here anymore and want to take a look at something different, whenever that time comes, maybe you'll consider us kind of thing. So, um, but I think doing all of those things consistently, and I think the biggest takeaway, Jamie, is that you have to be hiring 365 days a year. It doesn't stop. You, you know, our, our staffing plan is centered around having more people than we uh, need. And so we always, what I call being plus one or two or plus three, depending on the department. So if you have more, you have to expect change, you know, and expect surprises in the industry. So, uh, you know, it's a very interesting industry for a lot of reasons, which I won't go into, you know, we don't have time for that, but at the end of the day, uh, life happens. Uh, um, you know, we have musicians who suddenly want to go on a tour for a year, or we have maybe there's a family illness, or maybe, um, you know, balancing school with work is too much, and they need to cut back on their shifts. And that happens kind of every week. And a lot of people kind of get surprised, like, whoops, we had a call out, and whoops, this person had to go. But if you're in the driver's seat, you know, of your restaurant, uh, you always have plenty of staff, because everything goes south, you know, if you're not in control, and you're not really driving your bus. If um, uh, if you're short staffed and you have wasted overtime dollars, I think the team gets frustrated and burnt out a lot quicker. So for us, we, again, we're living 30, 60, 90, 180 days ahead of our business in terms of our staffing plan. I have my management team submit to me every week, their staffing plans, where they're at, how many they need, what their plan is. Um, and, you know, I always teach that uh, it's all about the person, the personality. I, I, I almost care less about uh, their experience. Um, but, you know, you can't teach that personality. If you look at Southwest Airlines, I mean, you go on Southwest and you see that they're a little different and better, um, you know, their, pe- their personalities. So I would hire that kind of person all day and teach them restaurants rather than teach, you know, even reteach some people who have been doing it for a long time. So, you know, you're looking for that right person. And um, if you have good training support, um, and a good person, you can teach them anything. So, yeah, it's so so funny there. You you hit a couple of things that I was going to bang you with, um, but specifically, I, I want to go back to this point that 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 Eric made for folks that are that are listening. Uh, very good, two two awesome pieces of advice. Uh, you know, what's the the acronym? ABC, right? Always be recruiting. So he, he talked about that, uh, dropping a card, uh, not stealing employees, but recruiting uh, for future opportunities down the road, if, especially if you're playing the long game. So you do have to have a 365-day mindset and always be recruiting. Staying ahead of your staffing is a, is a call out. Some people uh, you will learn quickly. You can't get surprised because people are absolutely going to leave, move, boyfriends, bop, bop, bop. You know, every, everything under the sun is going to happen in your business. Uh, so staffing and planning ahead. And, and the fact that he, that you talked about having a meeting every week, it's not happening every once in a while. You're talking about every week he's touching base with his team about what's their plan. So that's a really good call out for folks. And then I was going to specifically ask you the question, which you, which you, you answered yourself. I was going to ask you your thought on experience versus attitude and, and you, and you, and you were leaning on attitude, but, but so, but let me, let me, let me just let's stay there for a second. Experience versus attitude. Um, 
hit, hit me with a little bit more. You said you, you, will, you want someone who's, who's coachable, has the right attitude, but talk about, talk, talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, for me, it's a hospitality personality. You know, you go out a lot of times, you know, service, service in America is, you know, people talk about it all the time, that it's very frustrating. And I think that, you know, the, the operational part of restaurants, meaning developing a menu, you know, your, your recipes, your specs, ordering the food, fabricating the food, delivering the food, that's all the easy part. It's always the people that separates the great places from not the great places. So for me, I always, I have fun with my team and I'll say, okay, we have kind of the same concept. You're right across the street from me. How are you going to beat Eric Goodman? How's that going to happen? And, and the, the answer for me is always, I'm going to have the best people. So you can get a burger, a fajita, whatever, 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 anywhere. That's not the issue. The issue is your team. And are they uh, hospitality personality driven? So do they want to please? Do they want to take care? Do they have problem in what they're doing? And they have an upbeat, energetic, positive, welcoming, you know, sort of environment. So I look at it as like if, uh, if I'm interviewing someone, like would I want to go over for dinner to this person's place or this person's place? You know, this is going to be fun when they come in and welcome you and we're going to have a good time kind of thing. So uh, I think that's the personality profile that, you know, is most important at the end of the day. I'm, I'm way more totally go that way than the other way. Experience is a double edged sword, too. So I just love the great personalities. And you can't you can't teach it. You really can. I can teach lots of things, but you really can't teach someone's sort of approach to life. And you, know, you see a lot of people who you want to say like maybe you should consider something else because it seems like right. this is not their biz you know, right. or they're burnt or whatever. So that to me, that's like, stay away from that. Like the black plague. Yeah. Listen, I'll echo that because I, I get service experiences that are subpar the majority of the time right now. So I want more people with the personality that you're talking about. So as we start to wrap up, um, I'm going to give you a chance to talk about overall thoughts about the business tips you would share with, with uh, new owners, existing owners, people that are trying to build their business, trying to survive out there. So if you, know, if you had a few minutes with whether it's a new client or someone you meet on the street that's in the business and they, and they pick your brain for wisdom, what are a few things that you might share with them? Sure. Uh, for, again, the number one thing for me is people like uh, it, it's all about taking care of your team, showing appreciation for your team. It's a hard business in the best case scenario, right? So it's very dynamic. So uh, if you're hiring right and you have great people that are working for you and you show appreciation for them, and maybe you have to do things a little bit differently. For, for us, um, you know, I require a 45 hour work week of my team, two days off, 401k insurance. And then more important than all of that, Jamie, is the engagement. So we sit down every two weeks and everyone is dialed into our 10 year plan, our five year plan, our one year plan, and then our quarterly goals, and then our to do list. So there's no secrets out there. And um, the team is contributing and doing different projects to elevate our game and improve us all the time. So I think if you engage your team uh, more than just being great shift runners or this or that on a higher level, um, and they're connected to your business and connected to you as a leader, I think you're out ahead of 99.5% of all the restaurants. So invest in your team, show appreciation, give gift cards, give days off, uh, be kind. Um, and when you do that, when you need to lean, you know, lean hard in some cases or coach or teach or mentor someone, you have credibility in the bank because you're a, a good boss you know, uh, all the time. And so when you do speak about an opportunity, they listen, and they care about, you know, they're, they care about it because it's meaningful. So I would just say, you know, be great, great to your team and um, challenge them, engage them. Always look to raise the bar on your operations, you know, on, on, every, on every level. And build the reputation of being a great place to work. Because then the whole staffing things that we're talking about here today kind of go away. So managers want to work for you. Uh, and then hourly just want to be at the place that looks like they're having fun. Everyone says, well, wow, it's like everyone at the toast is having you know, a great time. And that's, that's not an accident. You know what I mean? So I think you can uh, have a self-fulfilling prophecy in one direction or the other. And you want to be the employer of choice at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome tips there. Uh, let's uh, give folks uh, the information on how to find you. Talk about where they can find Goodwin Recruiting. Please share any information about the restaurants you have, locations, anything you want to share. How can folks find you out there in the big world that we have? 
Yeah, sure. Good and Recruiting, uh, you can find, you know, just online and just, you know, dial in. We do have a mystery shopping company called 360 Intel, uh, which uh, measures uh, these things. So you can provide a mystery shop service, which I think is a great way to uh, say thank you to your team and, and use it as a, as a great reward and also, uh, you know, have the opportunity to offer professional development opportunities sort of sets a good standard, but it's a great tool for restaurants. And then the restaurants are, you know, the Friendly Toast. Uh, look at you know, thefriendlytoast.com. You know, we are building our uh, sixth location in, uh, in Bedford, New Hampshire. Uh, right now, we just opened in Burlington, Vermont on the last couple of weeks. So, uh, you know, it's a great, cool place, really unique. And, and uh, if someone's in the New England, or to seeing them there, but Appreciate that. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, I love that. I, lo- I love the name. Just makes you want to come in. Friendly Toast. That sounds fun. Well, uh, sure. uh, folks, that was Eric Goodwin, CEO of Goodwin Recruiting, as well as the other companies we talked about there. Uh, you can find a Goodwin on the web at goodwinrecruiting.com. And for more great restaurant marketing operations, service, people, and tech tips, stay tuned to us at runningrestaurants.com. We'll see you next time. Thank you.